What's up? I'm Liz, the Split Today DIY, and today we have a fantastic Pi Portal Titano internet connected weather display. Um, I this was similar uh, in origin story to the uh, camera slider project. Uh, worked with Noé uh, from Adafruit. He said, "Hey, want to update this weather project? You want to write some code?" And I said, once again. Hells yes, let's do it, let's go, let's go, yes, write the code, numbers, functions, and here we are. No, I designed this fantastic, like, retro computer case. We wanted to put the Titano, which is the big boy Pi Portal display, which, by the way, if you don't know what the Pi Portal is, it's basically this coprocessor board uh, where you have uh, an M4, as usual, but it also has an ESP32, uh, so it has internet connectivity, has a screen, touch screen, there's a bunch of stuff uh, on the back too. There's connections for a speaker, you can have SD card storage, which we're utilizing in this project, we're also utilizing the speaker. Uh, there's also uh, some connection sensors, everything you can imagine is basically on this board, um, and you can do a lot with it. Uh, so specifically, it's meant though for IoT projects because that ESP32. But first, before we get into the nitty gritty, let's just talk a bit about aesthetics. Because as I said, we've got this retro computer case, and I thought it'd be cool to make it look kind of like a vintage terminal. Not necessarily realistic to what was going on with terminals in the 80s, but to kind of riff on like the cyberpunk, like vintage computing Stranger Things kind of vibe where we get just some fun colors, some like dot matrix fonts and just have a time. And so that's what we've done here with 8-bit graphics. But beyond displaying the weather, uh, there's some additional functionality. Alarms. Uh, basically this almost functions as a personal assistant, uh, which is also pretty 80s because that's when that kind of stuff started happening. Uh, and so basically you can set alarms to happen either daily or you can set them to happen weekly or if you want to get into the code you could really have them come up whenever just the way that the code is is formatted but the way that we've done it is we have these four daily alarms uh, three for your three meals a day uh, and one to remind you to go to bed we chose those uh, mainly because I know and I personally have issues remembering to do that sometimes. Uh, so just a little reminder. And then our weekly alarm is to take out the trash. There's two ways you can control the alarm. You can either dismiss it, which means to just end it and you'll hear it the next time it's triggered, or you can snooze it, which is great because let's say you're like, oh, just five more minutes, I just got this little snippet of CircuitPython code to write. Uh, you can snooze and then it'll remind you again by whatever interval you set, which is quite handy, I think. You're welcome. To actually snooze or dismiss the alarms, we have physical buttons right here, and these buttons are pretty special. They're the Stemma buttons, so they're already soldered onto a circuit board, and they have the little, what they're what Adafruit's calling the Stemma connector, which is basically like a 3-pin JST style, and so you can use these 3-pin JST cables that they sell and they plug right into the two uh, ports that are on the back of the Pi Portal. So that makes this project completely solderless, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I love soldering. But it just makes it really simple if someone just wants to get it up and running. You don't have to really worry about it. And then also the buttons are perfectly placed to mount at the top of the case here. Uh, there's this fun little bracket that Noah designed that just sits there and it's, it's real nice. But if you don't like physical buttons, if you're like, ew, 
clickiness, tactile feel, not my thing. Um, there's also touchscreen controls uh, as well, where it says snooze and dismiss on the bitmaps. You can just touch, and they'll do the same thing. And they're both active at the same time. You don't have to pick and choose. You can have, uh, you can have both. And we have lovely bitmap graphics for the alarms. Noe and I kind of work together on those. Uh, for the meal one, I thought an avocado... You can really eat an avocado at any time of the day. Avocado on toast, av- guac, um, you know, whatever you want. So I, I thought avocado was the way to go with that. And then we've got uh, this really cute go-to-bed icon. And then, of course, probably my favorite is the, the trash panda climbing on the trash. How great is that? Now, in addition to the graphics, there's also sound. We've got these, this fun robot voice that reminds you to eat, take out the trash, and go to sleep, which is, is quite nice. It's getting late. Time to get some sleep. I don't sleep, but you need to. But let's start to go a little bit more into the nitty-gritty, because, as I said, I worked on the code here. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep. In fact, we're going to use a whiteboard to draw out graphically what's going on because I thought my drawing was a little messy in the last one. So we're going to try a whiteboard, see how that goes. But first, let's just talk a bit about the weather because the weather outside is weather. Uh, it's To grab the weather, we're using the Open Weather Maps API. Uh, I really like the API. It's very easy to use, works super great with Python, and I've used it, I've used it before. In fact, if you uh, turn to page, uh, let's see here, uh, 251 in my book, shameless plug here, uh, I can show you how to uh, use the Open Weather Map API for an e-ink display with uh, the Tinkerboard. And that really translates, though, to any board, like just the way to use it and everything. So uh, there's, there's that, just a shameless plug. Yeah, the Open Weather Map API it works really well. Basically, you're pulling down uh, JSON data, and then you're able to just kind of plug it in to the display. But that's great to talk about JSON data, sure. But how is that running? How is it all coming together? How does it know about your alarms? How does it know what time it is? Because it doesn't have a clock around its neck like Flavor Flav. So how does it know? Well, let's let's talk about it. Let's, let's draw it out. Let's take a moment. So, what's happening with the code? There's actually four code files. Four. Uh, so there's the code.py, which is the file that the main program is running from. There's also an open weather map graphics file, which is uh, basically unchanged from the original project because it was just really well done and why reinvent the wheel? I just kind of added some things to it and changed up the aesthetic a bit, but that's, that's really it. And then we have our secrets file. Secrets, uh, what they've done with the pipe which I think is really clever because um, I think it also makes it so that people won't accidentally share uh, their like internet uh, <laughs> information and other keys for grabbing JSON data. Is uh, it's this file that you kind of import as a library, basically, and the PyPortal is able to grab your SSID and internet password um, from that file, and then you can also load up other things. Uh, in this case, it also has your Open Weather Map key, uh, your Adafruit AIO key, and I added in a location aspect because it needs your location to pull the weather map data. But we'll get we'll get to that how it's all working. And then there's one last thing. It's called the calendar file. And the calendar file, that's where all your alarms are. That's where they're all living. Now, the best way to think about it is that these three files here, the open weather map graphics, the secrets, and the calendar, they're kind of helping out code.py. Code.py I hate to use a sports reference, but let's try it. Code.py is the quarterback in the football game. He's throwing the ball. These these people here, they're uh, they're the defense. They're knocking everyone down so that Code.py can keep throwing the ball. And that is the extent of my football knowledge. So Code.py is basically pulling everything from here, and, and that's how it's running. 
Uh, so, basically, you know, the secrets file, that has the SSID, uh, login info for everything, and it has your location. And then calendar has your alarms. It also has the uh, amount of time that you want to be able to snooze an alarm because that's important. And also has holidays because an extra fun feature is that this can display a holiday if applicable. So, and it'll display it right under the date because if you're like me, you might not realize that it's a certain holiday. Holidays that jump around like, um, you know, Hanukkah always starts on a different day every year. Instead of having to look it up, you can just trust your handy dandy pie portal to let you know. You could also put in people's birthdays. So then it'll tell you, oh, hey, it's your buddy Katie's birthday. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, it super is. We should go get drinks. Or you could also put maybe like once a month, your water bill is due on this date. And you'll be like, you're so right. I got to pay that bill. Or you could put, hmm. it's really limitless. It's basically, think of this as just your, your best friend on your desk, just letting you know so that you don't miss anything. So that's what the calendar file is. It holds all of your your stuff like that. And then the open weather map, that has all of this stuff that you're seeing on the screen right now. That has the, the weather display, has the weather icons, our lovely 8-bit art, and all of this stuff is getting shoved into code.py. So basically, what happens on boot? That's important. What, what occurs? Uh, so first off, the Pi portal has its own stuff built into the library that once you basically say, hey, I'm using a Pi portal, here's, I want to use this library, I have a Pi portal object. First, we uh, have a Pi portal startup screen which you saw in our little uh, skit, our hacking skit. And then, because this is a weather project, uh, there's an extra little piece of script actually in the open weather maps uh, file to display the open weather graphic. So it kind of lets you know, like, hey, this is the retro weather project. There you go. And then, uh, in the loop, what's happening once in code.py, once the ESP32 has connected ESP32 check, then it's going to call on the open weather map graphics. And it says, hey, I want to run this. So it's connected to the internet. It says, hey, I want to pull in this stuff. It does. Check. And then it's just running. And then every 30 seconds, it's going to update the time. And when it's updating the time, while it's doing that, it's also checking against our calendar. It's saying, hey, is it time to sound an alarm? Because if it is, I'm going to show the alarm graphic. I'm going to play that alarm sound. And then I'm going to wait because that means the alarm is rocking and I'm not going to update the weather and I'm not going to do anything else because it's alarm time and we've got to make sure that that alarm is either snoozed or dismissed. Now if it's snoozed, that means we're going to then check into the calendar thing. How long do we want to snooze? Snooze? And we kind of lock that in and we go, okay, well after that amount of time has passed, we're going to sound the alarm again, and we're going to show it, and we're going to wait. Are you going to snooze it again, or are you going to dismiss? And if you dismiss, that means we can move on. The alarm's no longer active, and we are just running the weather. It's just the weather channel. That's all. And so it's basically doing this, um, and it's using time.monotonic, my favorite thing in the world. Time.monotonic is a function that allows us to basically run a bunch of stuff all at the same time for different time <laughs> intervals uh, where you can say, hey, I want to check 
the time every 30 seconds, but without causing a delay. There's no delay here. Other stuff can happen while we're doing that. And the same thing too, it actually checks the weather and updates like the temperature and all that kind of stuff every 10 minutes. There, That's also part of the script. So timed up monotonic is a huge, huge part of this code. Um, and that's how it's able to just kind of keep counting seconds and keep checking for alarms and keep updating the weather and nothing crashes into each other. But that's kind of an overview of how this code is working. This was the first time I ever did a project that had all of these extra files happening with CircuitPython. And it was really convenient because of these two separate files, the reason why I have the secrets in the calendar files, you can edit your information very easily without having to dig deep into code.py or the open weather map thing. And then you can run this project as default by just putting in the times of your alarms and your, all your secret info, so like your location, your SSID, and it will just run. The project will just work. Uh, so that was one reason why I did the calendar file and added the location to the secrets file because it just makes everything so much easier for the end user if you just want to keep this basic and not go crazy with having to rewrite code or adjust anything. You can just have this rockin' display ready to go. Not a problem. But of course, there will be a learn guide and I'll go deeper into the code. We're talking some line by line stuff here. So if you want to do more, if you're like, oh no, that's too basic for me. I need even more reminders. I need more control. I need to know all the things at all the times. You'll be able to do that. And in the learn guide, you'll be able to download all this code. You'll get assembly instructions for the case, the circuit, all that. Yes. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you like this project. Uh, let me know down in the comments. I may regret inviting you to do that, but hey, if you did like it, toss me a thumbs up. Uh, again, down in the description, we'll have links to the learn guide which will have all the stuff you could ever need to make this project. Um, thank you for watching. Consider subscribe more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY. And we all know this is truly how I wrote the code. This is really how I wrote the code. I just did this for hours and then it just, it just happens. The magic of technical wizardry just came up on the screen. But also that means, you know, if you're having a snack and then it says, hey, you're supposed to be eating. And I'm like, oh, I'm already eating. I'm now I'm mad. I got to dismiss you. I, but I don't want to get the Cheetos dust on the screen. You can just conk it with the dis, uh, dismiss physical button and you're good. And your screen stays nice and pristine.